I'm just going to talk a bit about assessing the conditions that your bees have got because it's going to influence what you do with your hives and it's got to a point in the season now where we're at the end of the springtime and the conditions are changing uh, as you can see the ground's dry things like clover and capeweed are coming to an end the trees are still flowering a bit but I'll just show you this this hill gum here you can see there's still some flowers but there's also some but, uh, spent flowers that are finished there are other trees around that are still flowering well but it's important to know how to assess the conditions that you've got so how do you assess if there's still nectar coming in we'll go over to the hives now and check it's about midday here and the first thing is the traffic so there's a lot of traffic coming in and out so that's a positive sign that there's probably still a nectar flow and another observation there isn't a hell of a lot of pollen coming in but still a bit probably the tail end of the capeweed uh, that hill gum that I showed you doesn't produce pollen so they've got to find an alternative source of pollen and the other thing you can assess from outside your hive like this is the smell if there's a nectar flow on there will be a, a, a smell of ripening honey in the air which there is a bit today which is encouraging and then the other signs are mainly inside the hive so I'll get into that in a minute so the main reason I'm out here today is assessing the conditions seeing whether the honey flow is still on do I need to add more space to hives do I need to keep adding room in the brood chamber relieving congestion or not so here's this has been one of my stronger hives all season we'll just have a look here right so a couple of observations already they've got burr comb they've pushed up that mat they've got burr comb up here and the burr comb's got honey in it um, burr comb's sort of temporary storage for them and they'll eat they'll eat that honey out of the burr comb sort of first rather than in the in the big combs so you know if there's honey there they've got sort of a surplus of honey so we'll go a bit deeper and see what we find okay next layer down this is between the two supers once again burr comb full of honey it's even got some cappings on it um, I've hardly smoked these at all and they're they're not flying up at me I've actually graft, been grafting off this hive I quite like this hive anyway we'll go down a bit further now here's a quick observation I had a little ideal frame in that first super just to just to get them to draw it because I needed it for another purpose but what they've done is built comb down underneath that of course to fill the void and what they've done here is to the back here it's honey honey storage from here on it's they've kind of prepared it like brood comb and there's even pollen stored in this so they're bringing up pollen from under the excluder into the honey super and storing it which to me suggests congestion down below and potentially they need more space so here's the brood chamber there's not much burr comb or the frames aren't overly fat so they're pushing all that honey, honey up into the supers which is good if that's what you want <clears throat> so first frame here a lot of open brood a bit of pollen a little bit of honey not much but yeah that's all open brood
once again big frame of brood now <clears throat> so this is sort of hatching brood mixed with a bit of younger brood expanding out from this point here and I can see in these cells glistening nectar and that's nectar they brought in today so I'm pretty confident there's still nectar coming in if you just give it a bit of a shake like that you tend to get a few drops you won't be able to see but there's a drop there fresh nectar Capped brood, nice bit of fresh pollen there. I should mention we've had a cold week of weather, so these bees wouldn't have been flying much. So they're they're really flying hard today to make up of the make up the feed they've been eating the last three days. But yeah, that's all just hatched out in the last couple of days, and it's all relayed, fresh eggs. No sign of swarming here, yet. All right, big frame of capped brood. Bit of a queen cup there, but nothing in it. Really nice frame of brood. I spotted the queen. She's right there in the middle of the frame, the white, bit of a white blotch on her. She's a terrific queen, and I don't want to see her swarm away on me so I think it's appropriate to add a bit of foundation to the brood nest two frames and then give them another box because they really are pretty congested so I'm just going to pick two frames to take up already got that one leaning down the side I'll might as well use that one that's capped brood so I'm gonna leave that there it'll hatch out by the middle of the next week this one's real light yep open brood that's what I want I'll take that one up Two frames of wax foundation. Put one in position number three. other one in position number six. You always press your frames together as you put foundation in. <clears throat> now there's a brand new box, looks a bit stark to begin with.
So I've got a bit of wax and a bit of plastic foundation. What am I going to do here? Wax foundation to the outside, uh, plastic foundation to the outside. No, hang on, I didn't put the excluder on. So there's the new box I've added there. I've got the two combs from the brood box separated by two frames of wax foundation. They'll get in there and start working them straight away. The idea of bringing up open brood is that it draws up some of those nurse bees out of the brood nest and relieves the congestion down there. And then I've just got wax foundation, uh, plastic foundation on the outsides just to fill in the space. It's probably not ideal adding so much foundation to a hive, but that's what I'm dealing with at the moment and um, hopefully they do some work on it. And one thing I wanted to mention is this year I've, I've really tried to focus more on managing the top end of my operation, as in manage your good hives and give them what they need. I watch a bit of YouTube beekeeping and a lot of guys spend all their time trying to diagnose all these weak hives and fiddling around with weak hives. Well, don't ignore your big hives. And look what I've done here. I've built all that comb in under the mat. And to me, that's, you know, that's a missed opportunity. That could have been, potentially that could have been a box of honey. Like when they're scrambling for space so much and they've done all this work and all it is is burr comb, like this hive should have had another box on it. But can't do much about it now, except add another box.